Hi guys, Knife Detector here. And boy was I excited to get this one guys. I can't even begin to tell you, but let me first tell you how this video is gonna go. The way this video is gonna go is I'm first gonna show you the knife. I'm gonna tell you how I got it, what I paid for it. And then after the video, I'm gonna put up a slideshow of pictures of what it looked like before I cleaned it. And then after I did a couple of uh, passes cleaning it. I've already cleaned this about eh, twice. And uh, I have a lot to say about this knife, guys. So uh, here it goes. So I was perusing eBay as I often do. And I came across this knife lot. And uh, nobody was bidding on it. And I saw what I knew was a vintage elephant toe. And I thought to myself, self, let me just bid on it. It could be a, there's a hidden gem in there. I don't know what brand it is. All the seller said was that he did not know who the maker was because he couldn't read it. And sometimes, you know, as a buyer, as a knife collector, when I hear a seller say that they can't tell who the maker is, uh, that to me is like a challenge. Like, let me see if I can figure out who it is, right? So I bid on it uh, once, 36 bucks. And I got this knife plus two knives of little to no consequence, right? They're little key fob type knives. And then I got also uh, a Camco electrician's knife, which is okay. And this guy. So 36 bucks plus shipping, I decided to take a chance on this guy. And this is what I got. Now this is after cleaning it uh, a couple of times. And I know it's never going to be perfect as far as knives go. So I don't expect to get this knife looking like it did when uh, it came out uh, the shop about 100 years ago. But after doing a little bit of research, the best that I can tell is that this H. Boker and Company knife probably came out somewhere between 1890 and 1920 and um, it's an old knife when I got it there was a lot of white gook in here uh, and in the long nail neck started cleaning it almost as soon as I took it out of the package just because I couldn't wait and if you're like me guys when when you're cleaning a knife, you kind of get into this zen experience, this zen mode where time just flies by. Has that ever happened to you? If you've ever lost track of time cleaning a knife, well, then you just might be a knife collector. Or in my case, a knife detector. So I totally lost track of time, and probably the last couple of hours just went by super quick cleaning this knife. Didn't even know all that much time had gone by. But I'm really happy to get this knife. But another thing I wanted to say is that when I get a knife like this that came in the condition that it came, under the circumstances that it came, I take a couple of extra steps. And I usually take these steps anyway, but just saying. I really do when it comes to a knife like this. I got a weird vibe off of this knife, guys. Um, even from the point that I saw it on there on eBay. After I had purchased it, I sent a message to the seller, and this is a very reliable seller with 100% feedback and a rating of 30000 on eBay. I asked him if he knew any background information at all on the knife. I did not get a response. Now, when a seller which, with that high a rating uh, and 100% feedback does not respond to you, uh, to me, that's calculated. So either this knife uh, was found somewhere buried or in the sewer or something and he just didn't want to tell me or maybe it belonged to someone who passed away recently so when I get a knife like this that I get a weird vibe off of uh, what I do is I say a prayer first uh, I thank God that that I was blessed with this knife second of all I say a prayer uh, sending a blessing to whoever the previous owner of this knife was and I don't do that every occasion. I mostly always am grateful for things and I do say prayers, but but in this case I felt like I needed to, especially since the seller did not answer me and I had a weird vibe to begin with. But check out this beautiful knife. Now, this is after a little bit of cleaning, mind you. It's got some beautiful rosewood handles. Look at those pins. 
those are handmade pins that were pinned in there handmade by hand I could tell by looking at this knife that somewhere along the line these pins came loose and somebody had to repin it probably like 50 years ago this was all rusty I cleaned this out here you can see where they struck it a few times probably trying to tighten the blade and look at this wood this looks like some type of a rosewood on there now on the smaller blade you can kind of make out the boker tree if you look closely that to me looks like a boker tree and i believe this knife is made in germany um, if you look at the reverse side you can kind of make out where it says h boker and companies it has an apostrophe s there if you guys know uh what year that puts it at with the apostrophe s please let me know it says h boker and companies approved and probably on the bottom of approved it says cutlery i just can't see it because of the bolster there nickel silver bolsters carbon steel brass liners that still look pretty good despite the age um just a lovely knife you know when i got it it was closed like this and it looked okay you know it looked okay closed like this but every single elephant toe that I've, that I've ever seen you can see the nail nick on this side and you can see the nail nick on this side which is not the case with the way this knife was closed however it works like that and I have a feeling it's because uh, somebody decided to close it like this at one point and just kept closing it like this but I wanted it to close the other way so I kind of uh, did this you guys have seen me do this in other videos I uh, shaved the kick a little bit just a little bit to try and get it to close a little better on both sides I shaved the kick just a teeny bit to try and get it to close a little bit better didn't really have any effect not at all you see this knife uses a single spring so this kick is going to push this side down and this kick is going to push this side down so they both kind of have an effect on each other but check this out this is when they both have some tension on either side of the spring listen it still has snap when both sides of the spring have tension not so when they don't have tension that to me says that these are tired springs no snap there this way no no snap on the big blade so i decided let me try and close it this way and see if i can adjust the kicks so where the nail nick is on the correct side so i thought because it sticks out a little bit as you can see originally this blade was a little bit longer and goes a little went a little bit deeper this way but uh over the hundred years that this knife has been around i believe it's lost about 30 percent of that blade which leads me to speculate a lot about the owner you know with a knife like this i can tell a lot of things about the owner one they kept trying to keep this knife working and keep it functional more than likely so they could use it for their job or because they really enjoyed using this knife uh, secondly when they bought this knife uh, it might have cost I'm not sure about the pricing back then in the early 1900s but I wouldn't be surprised if it cost somewhere close to ten dollars back then and uh, which was a lot of money or maybe even uh, five to ten dollars and so they wanted to take care of this knife and they used this knife looks like they even did some batoning with this knife when I hold this knife in my hand I think that the person who used to own it worked with their hands uh, was a very strong individual a tough individual that was not afraid to get his hands dirty and nowadays you know a lot of people are afraid to use their knives because they don't want to damage them back then when people looked at a knife they asked themselves the question is it reliable and can it cut and that's it they didn't want it to break because they used the knife for work and a lot of times it meant earning a livelihood and feeding their families with the tools that they had and that's what knives were that's what knives were they were tools later on uh, people started seeing them as 
luxuries and and collectibles. But in the very beginning, they were tools. And at the heart of every knife beats the heart of a tool. And uh, I know some of you guys out there are calling me and saying, you're a tool, knife detector. <laughs> and I, I have to agree with you there. Uh, but uh, check it out. I could not get it to stay, uh, to be closed in this position the way I thought it should be. So I'm faced with a decision. Should I leave it like this and carry it like this and potentially get it stuck in my pocket? Look at that brass. Or should I just put it back the way it was and uh, and uh, carry it so that the way I received it, which is this way, that's the way I received it. Now. You can still see that it is functional. I don't know, guys. Tell me. My thinking is that it shouldn't go this way. Um, you guys that have more experience with these, let me know if I'm right or wrong. Uh, to me, if it works this way and it's not going to hurt the knife any, any more than it already has because I believe the blades are already used to it. You see how there's this side right here? That's why I think this blade should rest over here on this side. Um... Let me know what you think. Should I carry it one way or the other? Or should I go back to the way it was and carry it like this with that nail neck cle clearly coming out so I can open it or this nail neck clearly coming out so I can open it and just carry it just like that hoping that I won't tear my pants there or lose the knife potentially tell me what you think guys did I get a good deal on this guy I cannot find another Boker elephant toe for sale on eBay I've been looking all day haven't found it um, if I were to have to guess how much this is worth I would have to say in this condition which is not fantastic but vintage I guess uh, used somewhat damaged even though it's still usable I would have to probably guess that the price would start somewhere between 75 to 150 dollars tell me what you think guys how much do you think this knife is worth I'm interested to know uh, because I couldn't find another one like it on eBay and also let me know what you think about the side the nail nicks should be on I think this is how it should be, even though it protrudes a little bit, because I believe there used to be more blade in here that went all the way to the bottom. But tell me what you think, guys. This is going to be the first of, I think, five or six elephant toe videos that I'm going to show you. And this video is going kind of long. I know. I apologize. If you've been hanging in there with me this far, uh, just like Jersey Knife Guy says, hang in there with me, guys. Hang in there with me. Uh, I'll give you some more info. And there's going to be another eh, five or six videos on elephant toe knives coming up. All right, guys. This is the Knife Detector signing off. Same, keep your knives sharp and keep your wits even sharper. Oh, by the way, this knife did come very sharp. Take it easy, guys.